Hello, welcome to any electronics. In our previous video, we learned what an extrinsic semiconductor is and how to increase its conductivity. We will explore the unbiased PN junction diode in this episode and the information it contains. As we saw in our previous video, a P-type semiconductor has a majority carrier of holes, while an N-type semiconductor has a majority carrier of electrons. When the manufacturer dope a pure semiconductor crystal on the left side with trivalent impurities and the right side with pentavalent impurities or using P-type and N-type depends, a new type of semiconductor is created. The border or the junction is where the P and N semiconductors meet. Therefore, we refer to this as a PN junction diode. If we break the word diode, we get a diode 2 and electrode. We can now visualize the N-type and P-type semiconductor in a very detailed manner. When a pure silicon crystal is doped with a trivalent atom, a hole is created in the valence orbit of the trivalent atom. The charge of the hole is positive, and we represent the hole with a plus symbol. As the equivalent charge of the trivalent atom is negative, it will be represented with a minus symbol. This is how a P-type semiconductor can be visualized. In a similar manner, when we dope pure silicon with pentavalent impurities, we observe the presence of free electrons caused by valence saturation. We will use the minus symbol to represent the charge of free electrons. Pentavalent atom has a positive equivalent charge denoted by the plus symbol. This gives us a visual representation of the N-type semiconductor. Upon forming the PN junction diode, the free electrons on the N side feel repulsion, and a few of them diffuse across the junction and enter the P side. Once the free electrons enter the P region, they recombine with the holes, the holes disappear, and the free electron becomes the valence electron as the trivalent atom captures it in its valence orbit. Whenever an electron leaves the N region, it leaves behind a positively charged pentavalent atom, which becomes a positive ion. The same free electron in the P region combines with a hole in the trivalent atom valence orbit, causing the trivalent atom to become negatively charged as it captures this free electron. In a semiconductor, free electrons can move while ions cannot. Due to the covalent bond, the ions are tightly fixed and form the crystal structure. Each time a free electron diffuses across the junction, an oppositely charged ion, a dipole is formed. The region becomes free of charge carriers as soon as the dipoles form at the junction. The charge carrier free zone is referred to as the depletion region. Each dipole is linked to an electric field generated by positive and negative ions. As a result, any additional free electrons are repelled if they approach the depletion zone towards the P region from N region and are pushed back towards the N region by the electric field. This means that the electric field is initially attempting to prevent additional electron diffusion across the junction. However, electron diffusion occurs, which aids in the rise of the electric field until it reaches equilibrium. The electric field at the junction formed by the dipole is equivalent to a potential difference and is called barrier potential. At 25 degrees Celsius, the barrier potential of a germanium May diode is 0.3 volts, while that of a silicon May diode is 0.7 volts. While the PN junction diode has not been subjected to any electric field impacts, it is referred to as an unbiased PN junction diode and is denoted by the given symbol of electronics. The characteristics of forward and reverse bias diodes will be discussed in our upcoming video. To receive notifications, please follow us on other social media channels. Please leave your questions and suggestions in the comment section of the video. Don't forget to like the video. It will motivate us tremendously. Also, subscribe to the channel to receive notifications when a new video is released. Thank you very much.